five, the Amelia Park Handicap over a thousand metres and our first race off to Singapore, which is uh, Australia race number 10 for our Singapore viewers. This class one handicap looks to be an even race, uh, form behind Lord Apollo, but there are some other very various form lines which we need to look into. It uh, looks to be a strong speed on paper and there's a couple of maidens to go around again. We'll have a look at the last start performance of number one, our buddy boy, Winning a maiden very impressively at Bunbury. The run on the inside to challenge. Over on the outside now is Acker Singer. Our buddy boy called upon by Smith Schools out. Vampatorio. And further back then is Suave Singer with 150 left to go. And our buddy boy headed Bratella. Our buddy boy shot to the lead now. He's drawing away from them, our buddy boy. And he's going to win easily. Down the outside coming late. As you saw on that occasion, Glenn Smith had this galloper in a comfortable rhythm. He was out wide with a little bit of cover, but... Uh, Still accelerated far too well in the straight and uh, left them left them for dead, including the likes of uh, Hidden Kingdom. Now, that was an impressive performance, which should suggest that this horse should be competitive in this race. We've also got number six, uh, the first starter of the race, gets the blinkers on, Glen Albin. Now, this horse from the James Graveyard, Kayla Cross takes the ride. Its most recent trial, it uh, was very impressive, one by 2.3 lengths and uh, in very slick time as well. Now, as we know, race day is a, a lot different to trial form, but uh, I really like the way this galloper went. And with the blinkers on, should definitely be sharp enough over the 1,000 metres. In the race, we've also got number eight, Valdiri Valdera. This mare by Ju Sasso has been racing in good form and uh, always liked to back mares in form. They usually hold their form quite well. Now, this is a step up, no doubt about it. Uh, he's seeing the track for the first time, but has placed twice from the distance from two goes. I think uh, Jason Whiting from Barrier 8 will elect the soft option and go back on this mare for a little bit of cover and expect her to be finishing off very strongly, which uh, she has been doing of late. In the race, we've also got number three, Greco, who comes over from New South Wales and joins the John Botel yard. Shelby Botel to ride and she takes three kilos off this galloper. Trial was okay. Now, blinkers come on and I think I think this galloper will definitely appreciate coming over to WA. Uh, first up record is good. However, it hasn't won in 574 days. Now, that is a concern. But with the run, it should get from barrier six. Uh, look, I'm not saying back this horse. He is actually still an end tie. I'm not saying back him, but is one to have a look at going forward. We've seen uh, Alan Matthews get some horses from New South Wales, and they've been absolutely flying and th really thriving in the... Western Australian environment. So that's definitely one to watch, especially going forward. And number five, Barry's Rabbit, uh, is, uh, has had a trial between runs after winning its maiden at Narragin. Now, had no luck in running on that occasion, but still found a way to win, which was thought, thought was quite impressive. Gets the claim of Fiona Bell with three kilos. Now, this galloper can definitely run a race. Uh, it is fresh but uh, over the 1,000 metres, that will suit it well. Onto the selections now, I've got the eight on top, Valderi Valdera, from six, Glenalbin, three, Greco, and five, Barry's Rabbit. Race number six, the Perth Racing YouTube handicap over 1,700 metres for the class three handicappers. Now, this is also Australia race number 11 for our Singapore viewers, but getting stra straight into it, we'll have a look at the uh, recent replay of Jag him up, who won super impressively at Pinjarra last start. It kicked away, jag him up from line cruiser and Mississippi Sammy. Further back is Mayaki Mack and then Compass Point followed by Fairly Hot. Didn't like Irish brother at all, all over the shop but jag him up is a day in front down to the 150. Five clear from Fairly Hot running the second then line cruiser but jag him up is blitzing them in the run to the line. Jag him up draws right away for Johnson Porter to win by Was really impressive there leading all the way on that occasion and gave a really good kick up the Pinjarra straight on uh, that occasion under Clint Johnston and Porter again is just riding in uh, superb form. It's, he's getting a lot of good rides as well, and this is another. Now, the seven uh, uh, Medom and ten Miyaki Mack come out of that race. Uh, Miyaki Mack was good and was wide on that occasion, but was still beaten seven lengths. And Medom was not a bad run as well, laid in and did a little bit wrong. So they could be ones to watch after this uh, out of this race. Uh, be interesting to see how they go. Uh, the, there's Al Maleo in this race as well, who was super impressive at 20 to 1, winning last start at Northern, beating Cosmic Journey by 3.3 lengths. And 
was quite impressive on that occasion. It wasn't expected, but uh, Colin Webster got this horse up and running for that race. And, you know, when these mares get on a roll, as I mentioned, they can be very hard to run down. Out of that race also comes number eight, Cape Revival. Now, that wasn't a bad run either, beaten four lengths. Uh, also has form behind another smart one, uh, McCarty's, McCarty's Keeper, who is also in this race. Now, that was an impressive run two starts ago. Last start didn't really handle the step up and ran on fairly. It was still a reasonable run, and I really liked that run, but I'm willing to forgive that and go back the start before when it won and had two in a row. I really liked this uh, mare by Keeper. I think she's... Uh, She's better than a few of these. It was really hard to line up the form, especially McKatie's Keeper and Jag Em Up. But the way I've gone, I've gone with three on top. McKatie's Keeper from five, Jag Em Up. Four, Cincinnati Boy, and one, Ano Diggers. On to race number seven of the day at Belmont, the Perth Racing Young Membership Handicap over 1,400 metres. It's also race number 12 in Singapore, uh, Australia race number 12 in Sing for our Singapore viewers. We'll kick on straight to the replay horse, which is number eight, Material Man, who won very impressively in Class 3 company last start. And they're being followed by, at the head of the others, near the inside, Jester Rock. Down the outside comes Material Man as well with his run by the 200. Material Man let down quickly to grab Skellig, Headlander boy, Travinsky. But Material Man has raced away from them, dashes away from Skellig, and Material Man opening up in the McDermott family colours to win it well. Material Man... Now, this galloper is still... A class two, but uh, put away the more experienced horses last start very impressively after settling back. Uh, Lucy Warwick had a, had a tight grip of this horse, and then coming around the turn was unleashed and absolutely put paid to them. It was a it was a great performance by this son of Vital Equine. Now a lightly raced four year old has only had the the two race starts, and bo winning both those starts. Uh, I think this gallop is pretty handy. He's, he comes into this fresh over the 1,400 metres, and Justin Warwick, he's just been flying at the moment. His stable is churning out the winners. Uh, out of, uh, of the others, we have number three, Key to Fame, who is third up into this race, and last start behind Senso was very good, and Senso has since come out and won over a mile, so that form has been franked. But uh, I really liked that run when leading. It probably shouldn't have been leading and I think would have gotten closer with a sit. But uh, it was a good run considering its first up run was a little bit uh, below expectations. Now, from the Simon Milliard, Peter Nucky rides this horse. Uh, has an excellent record at the track. Three starts, two wins for one third. And can definitely feature here from Barrier 7. I'm hoping they take a sit on this occasion and allow this horse to finish off because I think he has a ton of ability, this gelding by Al Maha. Number nine, Star Bay. This big horse is a big strapping sort of horse, this uh, son of Sebring. Was good three starts back behind King of Wu and was allowed to stride out wide and move up outside the leader. Held its position that day, running second, but its two most recent starts, as we mentioned, was have been drawn inside, barrier six and barrier three. Now, we mentioned last time on the program when analysing this horse, he is a big bloke and he's probably preferred to draw out a lot wider. He's got barrier eight of 12 on this occasion, which will probably suit. He might let a few go, depending on how he jumps. He'll let a few go and then roll, or he'll uh, jump well and then probably hopefully go sit outside the leader where he's most comfortable. I think he's a, a very, very nice horse. Another one to have a look at, number four, long overdue, is fresh is this horse, and uh, that's when that's when this son of Du Sasso runs best. Jared Noski takes the ride for Donna Riordan, and uh, last start behind Sasso Circus was was uh, very good in leading, but knocked up late, but can still run a race here fresh. Onto the selections, I've got number eight on top, Material Man from three, key to fame. Nine, Star Bay, and four, long overdue. On to race number eight at Belmont, the Dolbasso Small Goods Handicap over 1,300 metres. Australia race number 13 for our Singapore viewers as well. We'll go straight into the replay of uh, last start place getter, Red Glow. Behind them now on the inside as Pike goes towards the cutaway and they're followed further back by Salvaged and Red Glow still well back in traffic. 200 left to go, Big Cabbage letting down, races up, grabs the lead from Bourne Regal. Red Glow starting to get through on its inside and here's Candlelight Star, the grey. Big Cabbage joined by Candlelight Star. Big Cabbage, Candlelight Star went to the line. There was now Red Glow is one of the only maidens in this Class 1 handicap but uh, it's run last start, had excuses and only finished a length behind Candlelight Star. 
had no racing room on that occasion at Pinchera and uh, also a wide barrier. Its last three barriers have been 12, 12 and 11. Finally draws a lead barrier two here. Uh, Jared Noski takes the ride and uh, we'll definitely expect this galloper to be much closer to the speed and get every chance. We've also got number two in this race, Buckshot Flyer. Now, has uh, did win a maiden last preparation at Pinjarra, but uh, after that at Belmont, uh, sat outside the leader and faded late uh, pretty noticeably. Since then, has had a little break since last year and comes into this first up off a really nice trial at Lark Hill, this gelding by Musket, running very good time of 57.16, which on the day was very sharp over the 950 metres. This is definitely a horse to watch. Barrier 3 carries the 57 kilos with Clint Johnston Porter's claim, and again, he's got a really good book of rides today, and this, is, this one is no exception either. We've also got uh, number 1, Mega Factory. Now, this horse out of the Neville Parnham yard. Aaron Mitchell takes the ride and his form just goes to speak. He's riding, he's riding uh, horses for everyone now. He's, he's just in great form and everybody wants a piece of him. Last start, the Scalloper Mega Factory though was third at Bunbury behind Giggity Giggity Goo and race wide on that occasion but still battled on well for third. Two starts ago at Ascot was beaten on less than a length by Pinzu, which was a, a super performance, and uh, that form has since held up with Pinzu coming out and winning. On to the selections. I've got number two on top, Buckshot Flyer. I just think it gets the good run, and ben, uh, Daniel Pierce rather, will have this horse ready to go from one Mega Factory, three Dusha Zakitsky, and five Red Glow. Now on to the best bets on the card. For me, I'm getting them out of the way early. Race number one, number seven. Unmarked bills from the Simon Miller yard. Now, this galloper's last start was too good to ignore. And race number two, number one, what did you do? From the Neville Parnham yard finds a very suitable race. Now, don't forget to check us out on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Like and follow us for all the latest information on everything to do with Perth Racing. Also, check out uh, perthracing.com.au. Until next time, we'll see you later on in the week for the Saturday edition of The Box Seat. Good luck.